Hello, friends and family. Before our ceremony begins, Kyle and Michaela have asked me to inform everybody that their preference is for this to be an unplugged ceremony. And what they mean by that is they'd like for you to enjoy the moment with them. So please silence your phones and refrain from taking any pictures or video during the ceremony. Also, please note that you will see one phone on the tripod that will be live streaming the ceremony for our loved ones that couldn't make it here today. Thank you. assemble here because of our great love for Kyle and Michaela in the presence of God to witness the uniting of this couple in marriage. I ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. <laughs> On behalf of Kyle and Michaela, we'd like to welcome you to this very special occasion 
on the day they exchange vows to become husband and wife. I've had the pleasure of knowing Michaela since just after she was born, and Kyle just over the last year or so. First, they wish to thank the family and friends for the support that they've had over the many years, especially for those that have worked hard and sacrificed to make this moment possible. If you're in attendance here, it is because they could not have imagined this precious day without you being a part of it. Let's pray and give thanks to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for Kyle and Michaela and the privilege of participating on this special day. Thank you, Jesus, for how you have brought Kyle and Michaela together. Thank you for your wonderful love and your gracious goodness. We ask for your blessing now, not only for the ceremony, but also for their very lives. Father, I pray that you be glorified through their union and that you do wonderful and glorious things through them. We just ask for your blessing and give thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Well, at this point in the ceremony, we look to God's word for counsel. The Bible is the owner's manual, as it were, for our lives and how to operate our lives to the fullest capacity. Something fundamental is changing today. As Kyle and Michaela's invited guests, I remind you that you are not here as spectators, but as witnesses. You have been invited by this couple to witness their giving their vows in the sight of God, before you, and before each other. Marriage isn't the invention of man, it's God's idea. The purpose of marriage resides within the purpose and plan for God. Today I will talk to you about God's intent for marriage, about self-sacrifice, about serving others, and about contentment. God's intent for marriage is clearly seen in the opening chapters of the Bible in the book of Genesis 2. Paraphrasing, the Lord God said, it isn't good for the man to be all alone. I will provide him with a well-suited partner to help him in every way. So God created the woman from a part of Adam himself and then introduced them. Then Adam said, she is a part of me because she was created from my very side. This is why a husband and wife cling to one another. And this is why when a man and woman grow up and leave mom and dad and become one with each other. She who was taken from his side is now restored to the very place where she was created. Note that the woman was taken from Adam's side and not from his head <laughs> to rule over him and not from his feet to be trampled on, but from his side to be equal with him, from under his arm to be protected by him and from close to his heart to be ever loved and cherished. Now, Kyle and Michaela, I'm sure you'll recall that one of the things we talked about <laughs> at length over the past months was that in God's plan for marriage, he intended the man and woman to become one flesh, <laughs> as noted in Genesis 2, 24, an unbreakable bond, the very core of the family. This bond is a physical proxy for the eternal bond and unity that's shared between the Trinity of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This bond of marriage is never to be disrupted by children, family members, hobbies, work, or any other outside influence. Nothing, none of these influences is mentioned in these verses regarding marriage. The focus is exclusively on the one flesh of husband and wife. Now the husband and wife as one flesh become the core of their family and establish the structure by which all other interactions in the family occur. The husband fully protects and supports the wife, and the wife fully supports and protects the husband. Each must fully uphold their intended purpose, and if this family core isn't solid, then the structure around the family core crumbles. Now within the marriage, God intended for the man and wife to be equal 
but have different roles in the same manner that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are equal but have different roles. The Father originates, the Son reveals, and the Spirit executes. Creation was from the Father, through the Son, and by the Holy Spirit. In Luke 14, the Bible describes, the, describes Jesus the Son as the groom, and the church is described as his bride. Now, the Son expresses his love for his bride in self-sacrifice, absolute self-sacrifice, self-sacrifice to the uttermost, love that knows no end, and love that goes to a cross and is resurrected. The church expresses her love to the one that, gave, that gives everything for her, and the bride joyfully submits to her husband and acknowledges him as her leader and following gladly where he leads. This is the marriage to which your marriage is to point. Kyle and Michaela, what this means then is that in addition to being of that one flesh, marriage also involves self-sacrifice for the good of the other. In the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are united in love since eternity past. But here in the world, there's also another unholy trinity, which is me, myself, and I. <laughs> that attitude will ruin an otherwise perfectly good marriage. It can become a big home wrecker. In John 3.16, you, you may recall the, the verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. For God so loved that he gave. For God so loved that he self-sacrificed. For God so loved that he died on the cross so that others can be saved. Jesus' appeal to his disciples was, was that if anyone wished to be discipled, they would need to deny themselves, pick up their cross, and follow him. Likewise, if you want to excel in your Christian life, get used to telling yourself no and removing the things that are inconsistent with God's will because he says, keep real close to me. Now, while this may appear to be a somber plea, it is one that presses to exceed what we see in the world, where even some Christian marriages are not necessarily doing that great. So please consider Jesus' words. We're not practicing a lifestyle of self-denial and instead a me-first attitude makes for a weak Christian and a weak marriage. Jesus advises that if you are a good Christian in your heart, you will also be a good husband and a good wife. So step number one is to put all selfishness in check. A me-first attitude takes two different people down different paths, which makes it very frustrating. Telling yourself your, your selfish nature no gives room to love and serve others to consider others better than yourself, to be not overly concerned with your own needs, but overly concerned with your spouse's needs. It's the good of the other that you seek. Instead of possibly obsessing on your needs and how your spouse is falling short of meeting them, instead of obsessing on your spouse's needs and how you might be falling, instead, obsess on your spouse's needs and how you might be falling short of meeting them. That can't happen when self-interest is king. Self-interest must take a back seat in successful marriages. In marriage, we die to keeping records of wrongs, of pointing the finger to unrealistic expectations, wanting our own way on our own terms. We die to jealousy and to holding grudges or to saying things like, well, you always, or you never, or I told you so, we die to always having to be right and to have the last word. When you say, I do today, you are also saying, I don't, to all others. We also die to roaming eyes and temptations, to friends and foes that would want to get in between you. Listen and heed to these words from the book of Ephesians. Husbands, love your wives just as, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. And also, husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves 
his wife loves himself. So Kyle, learn, learn and lead the way and role model how this goes. And note that we never heard Jesus say, well, what about my needs? Or what's in this for me? Instead, he said, I've become the servant of everybody. Jesus is your role model. And the crazy thing is that when we give ourselves away like this, when we lose and deny ourselves, we actually find our true selves. When we die to the things that are unhelpful, we truly live. In addition to placing the needs of your spouse ahead of your own, serving God together and helping others is what following him is all about. God is your lifeline. I encourage you to be part of a church family, read the scriptures, pray, and have corporate worship. These things can provide you with the grace and ability to do the very things that I've been talking about. Without following Jesus, there's little or no hope of denying yourselves long term. We need his help. So Kyle, I say to you today, this is your bride. As her father, Mike, walked away moments ago, that was no mere formality. And it wasn't just simply symbolic. Something huge is changing here today. You have a new responsibility, a responsibility that you've never had before. Your love for Michaela is to know no end. You are her provider and her protector. Her father has taken care of her and brought her to this very point. But he should be able to lay his head on this pillow each night, knowing that you will do whatever it takes to protect Michaela and to provide for Michaela for the rest of her life. She should be able to sleep with a sense of peace that God has given her a provider and a protector. And Michaela, I say to you today, this is your husband. No one has forced you to be here. <laughs> Paraphrasing from Ephesians, you are to joyfully submit to him, to trust him, to follow his leadership. You are making a choice today that Kyle will be your provider, that Kyle, Kyle will be your protector, and you are to love him through submitting to his leadership, supporting him, caring for him, and through the, being the complement that God has provided him. I would remind you as well, when your father walked away, something really changed. For both of you recall the, these words from the book of Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it, do, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Lastly, in the book of Hebrews, in verse 13.5, it reads, Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Kyle and Michaela, be content with what you have. I want you to know that through any struggles that you may face, Jesus is perfectly content with you. When you deny yourselves for the sake of the other and show grace to one another, despite any storms in the future that you may face, and that you depend on Jesus, you will be equipped for a successful and blessed marriage. Be content with one another, don't forsake the other, just as the Lord Jesus Christ will never forsake you. As you come together today, remember what we talked about a few weeks ago, that you will become one, and you alone are the center of your new family. For that was God's intent with Adam and Eve. Again, never let that unity be disrupted by anyone or anything. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that these things are impossible to do without your Holy Spirit. That as we repent of our sins and open our hearts to Christ, you make us born again. Only then 
do we have the power to master self, to die to the things that are destructive, and to be raised not by the power of our efforts, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, who dwells in our hearts through faith. So thank you, Father, that you give us the power to do this and that you give us the keys, not only to become a devoted disciple of yours, but so that the marriage can become a reflection of what God can do in a couple's lives. We thank you, Father, for Kyle and Michaela, and that these truths that they are incorporating into their lives sustain them in a fruitful marriage. We ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. We are at that point in the ceremony in which it's time to make some life-changing vows. Are you ready? Okay. Kyle, under the eyes of God, do you take Michaela to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise to honor her in love, to be sensitive to her needs, to comfort her in difficulty, and to put your full and complete trust in her so long as you shall live? I do. By making this commitment, you are joining in the sacred covenant of marriage. Michaela, under the eyes of God, do you take Kyle to be your lawfully wedded husband? <laughs> do, you, do you promise to honor him in love, to be sensitive to his needs, to comfort him in difficulty, and to put your full and complete trust in him so long as you both shall live? I do. By making this commitment, you are joining in the sacred covenant of marriage. Kyle and Michaela, the sacred vows that you make to one another today present you with the opportunity to express your love in your own words. I would at this time invite you to publicly declare those vows. And Kyle, guess what? You're first. <laughs> They say that Disneyland is the most magical and happiest place on earth. That statement is true because little did I know that the summer of 2019 was going to be the year that I met my soulmate on a trip to the most magical place on the earth. When I first laid eyes on you, one thought crossed my mind. Damn, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you were with somebody at the time, and even though you were with someone, I couldn't help myself but get to know you, the person that I would end up being one of my best friends. Your energy, your passion, inspire me in ways that I never thought imaginable. Your influence is so strong that I no longer fear being myself with you. I remember our first date at Fran's private pond. You thought it was just a girl's night out. I remember you in that cheetah tank top and your blue jeans with the cheetah print when I surprised you at the door with flowers and some wine. I had told you that at the door that there was a dress for you in the bathroom and that I had a surprise for you and told you to go change. I had seen you in this black dress before, but something about seeing you walk out of the house wearing it, knowing I'm about to take you on a date, was mind-blowing and gave me butterflies. You had a twinkle in your eye when you smiled at me. Your smile got brighter and brighter as the moon came out with our steak dinner sitting on a blanket in peace and quiet, talking for hours about life, dreams, and hopes. This was the moment I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. On August 25th of 2020, you brightened my life by saying yes to being my girlfriend and being a part of my life in a way I never thought I would have you. You're kind-hearted, funny, even including your dad jokes. Most of all, you complete holes in me that I never thought would ever be filled. There's not one thing about you that doesn't make me smile. You have me constantly looking and staring at you at random times throughout the day because there isn't a moment that I don't ask myself how I got so lucky to call you mine. My fiance and now my wife. My life became full when you, when you and Phoebe came into it. <laughs> 
I fell in love with your personality, your vibe, and you're constantly making me want to be a better man and a person and now a husband for the both of us. It's a miracle to have found the kind of peace and happiness that you've given me. I vow to always be there by your side through thick and thin. I vow to always be there for us, to try for us. I vow to put forth best my every day, my best every day for our life together and for Phoebe and for our future family. Michaela, you may now make your promise. Two and a half years ago, I went on a trip to Disneyland with one of my friends and a few other people that I didn't know. I almost didn't go because I'm pretty introverted and I didn't feel like getting to know a bunch of new people. <laughs> on that trip, I made a new friend. This guy was cute, he made me laugh like crazy, and he gave me a weird feeling I had not felt for a long time. I couldn't figure out what that feeling was. That guy I met would end up being my best friend and the love of my life. That guy, of course, is you. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge was that we met at a really horrible time in my life. I felt broken from a lot of things that had happened in the years before. I felt lost, hopeless, and even homeless. As we got to know each other, you always encouraged me to be myself completely. You appreciated all of the little aspects of me. You laughed at most of my jokes, <laughs> embraced my randomness, took me out on adventure, adventures, and celebrated accomplishments and so many other good things. But even more importantly, you helped me and were there for me through the bad, like taking me mini golfing and out for donuts when the world around us was literally on fire and I was having a little panic attack, taking care of me when I was sick or injured, and finding adventures for us in the time of a global pandemic. You helped me find myself again. In your eyes, I saw hope for the future, and that weird feeling I had not felt in a long time was the feeling of home. I can't pinpoint the time I knew you were the one for me. Sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> a part of me just, I think I always knew, I just wasn't ready for it. There are so many things that I love about you. Your smile, your laugh, your passion, the way you hug and comfort me, how you want to celebrate all of the good things in our lives, except for your birthday, <laughs> how you can make me laugh even when I'm having some type of major stress and anxiety. You have this magical way of keeping me calm and reminding me that we're in this together and I'm not alone in figuring things out anymore. I even love your weird obsession with making me use slang that I don't understand. <laughs> I thank God for you every single day. I vow to love you endlessly during the good times, and even more importantly, during the bad or hard times. Whether it's wildfires, our future children, driving us crazy, global pandemics, or anything else the world throws our way. I promise to be there to support you in everything you do. I promise to at least try and laugh at all of your jokes. <laughs> I promise not to just say I love you, but to show you that every day. I also promise to continue helping, to continue helping you find things that are right in front of you and to make sure that I'm not yelling at you just because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much, Kyle, and I can't wait to begin the rest of my life with you, my best friend. Kyle, do you possess a token of your love and affection to give to Michaela this day as a seal of this holy covenant? I do. <laughs> Kyle, as you hold this ring for Michaela before you, may it always remind you of your commitment to love Michaela to the uttermost. 
May every time you look upon this ring, you not see, simply see a piece of jewelry, but you see the commitment that you've made in the sight of God and to these witnesses to love Michaela without end. Your love for her shall never end. May this ring always remind you of that sacred commitment. Please place this ring on Michaela's hand and repeat after me. I, Kyle. I, Kyle. Give you, Michaela. Give you, Michaela. This ring as a symbol of my love and commitment. This ring as a symbol of my love and commitment. With this ring, With this I, thee, ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. Michaela, do you possess a token of your love and affection to give Kyle this day as a seal of your holy covenant? Michaela, I pray today that this ring would also always remind you that your love for Kyle is to be second only to your love for Jesus Christ. May you see this ring and remember that you have committed today to respect and to trust Kyle. I pray that it will also remind you that one of the ways you love and trust Jesus is by loving and trusting Kyle. Please place this ring on Kyle's hand and repeat after me. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> I am Michaela. I am Michaela. Give, this, give you, Kyle. Give you, Kyle. This ring is a symbol of my love and commitment. This ring as a symbol of my love and commitment. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring. Well, based on the charge that you have received today and based on the vows that you have taken in the sight of God and these witnesses today, Kyle and Michaela, we rejoice with you that the two roads that brought you here will now be one as you leave. Now, by virtue of the authority invested in me as the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord and in the presence of these assembled witnesses, I pronounce you husband and wife. You have given sacred vows before each other, before us, and before a holy and righteous God. These vows are never to be broken. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Kyle, you may now kiss your bride. present you, Mr. and Mrs. Kyle Bell.